what changes on day one in the United States Senate for the Arizona seat that you would represent? What changes in the Senate in a change from Senator Sinema to Senator Gallego? Well, the first change is that, you know, the people of Arizona are actually going to have a fighter for them. I want to say a fighter for them, fighting for the people that are working every day, the people that actually decide how much they make per year by hour, not by their income taxes at the end of the year, the people that have to decide between paying their utilities or paying the rents, uh, figuring out how to make ends meet, whether they're going to get generic food uh, this year or they're going to actually be able to afford maybe a little more brand name. Uh, I'm fighting for those people. Senator Sinema is no longer fighting for those people, and she long ago abandoned them. And so that's the first change going to be, that every day there's going to be someone that actually is going to care about working families in Arizona. Uh, let's go to one of the big procedural questions in the Senate that uh, Senator Sinema has been very outspoken on. She really worships the 60-vote rule in the, in the Senate. Every time the 60-vote threshold is imposed, she's completely in favor of it. Uh, most Democrats, almost all the Democrats, want to get rid of it, and they want the Senate to run as a majority-run institution. 51 votes, you win. What's your position on that? Look, my position is that filibuster has to get reformed. Um, it's not a, a tool of compromise. It's a tool of, of obstruction. Look what happened after Sandy Hook. You know, dozens of, of, of children are killed, and there is no compromise. There is no comprehensive, uh, you know, gun legislation that passes, right? We have been trying to work for years and years to deal with immigration reform. We pass bills out of the House that die in the Senate. Uh, at the end of the day, this is actually really used to stop real, real movement and actual laws are actually going to help people in this country. And, you know, she talks about the filibuster as if it's some kind of great cause. When she was in Davos, high-fiving Joe Manchin about, you know, killing the Voting Rights Act, she did it on MLK weekend, mm -hmm. right? On the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, uh, someone that she claims was her mentor and her best friend. So she's lost absolute trust with everybody in Arizona. Uh, and, and I think in general, I think she's going to have problems winning uh, any races because, you know, it's not about the filibuster. It's not about in, any particular bills. It's the fact that she just doesn't communicate and doesn't really connect anymore with the people of Arizona. So there's, there, there are two uh, jobs of, of a United States senator. One is to represent the interests of the state, and the other is to represent the interest of the nation. There are times when you're casting a vote that is a 50-state a vote, and there's times when you're casting a vote that's a very yeah. Arizona vote. There could be water rights issues, for example, that are that are very, that are completely controlled by your views from Arizona. What would you say are the number one Arizona issues for you and the, and the top national issues for you? Well, number one Arizona issue is, is the drought. It's affecting uh, Arizona. It's going to affect us going into the future, our growth, our, our ability to even, you know, grow food in a very, uh, you, know, you know, an area that's actually been, you know, the agricultural breadbasket of, of the country for many years. Uh, number two, immigration. We need to have a final Congress immigration reform bill. We've had so many opportunities at this, and it's always been politicians last minute that, you know, kind of just pull the, the football before, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Charlie's able to kick it. Uh, and lastly, uh, in general, we need to fight this despair that is out there in America. There is just this general viewpoint that somehow the American dream is actually leaving uh, the hearts of most Americans, and that's just not the case. Uh, I think that we need to actually go and reinforce the economic opportunities that everyone deserves in this country to actually succeed, to like fulfill the American dream. And you have politicians that are so cynical that are actually feeding into that despair. And I don't think that that is, a, that is healthy for this country. It's one of the first, one of the only unifying things that actually connects all of Americans from, you know, the West to the East is this idea that no matter where you are, you are going to have the opportunity to succeed. There's tons of Americans who don't feel that way. And I want to make sure that we change that.